Hi, Christy Hill, Naturalist Coordinator at the Chattahoochee Nature Center. And we are here with one of our non-releasable wildlife, a Florida pine snake. This is a very young pine snake, actually bigger than most of the snakes that we have in Georgia that are about 12 to 16 inches long in length. This one is already a pretty big snake and it hatched out down in Florida. Um, we have this snake because it was bred in captivity. It was not ever outside in the wild and would not belong outside now. This snake is about six months old now. And I'm gonna see if I can give you guys an idea about size. Because we're gonna compare in just a few minutes to a little bit older Florida pine snake. So this snake would not be found in the metro area of Georgia, like where we live. This snake would be down in the coastal plain, that region of Georgia where it's really sandy. Um, actually, this snake isn't a digger any more than other snakes, but it can sort of dig under the sand to get to its favorite food source. Um, you guys know how gophers like to dig? Well, this animal kind of likes gophers to eat. So it has to make its way down under the sand to find its food. And the Florida pine snake has an extra little plate on its nose or its snout that helps it push through the sand. This coloring on this snake is really different from another pine snake that we have. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Where we are right now is a representation of the coastal plain at the Chattahoochee Nature Center. This spot right here was made to seem like the coastal plain of Georgia. We have longleaf pine trees, we have yuccas growing here, wire grass, all things that are also part of the gopher tortoise habitat down in South Georgia. So this is a very different looking Florida pine snake. He has been with us for quite a while, since 1998 at the Chattahoochee Nature Center. And he was, he was born, he hatched in 1995. So how old does that make him now? Well, in 2020, he's going to be 25 years old this year. So the snake we just saw was much, much younger, six months old. And you can see a little bit more about this snake. Their coloring is a little different. This one looks almost like he's an albino, but he is a Florida pine snake, and this is a very natural coloring for him. So we have a region in the Chattahoochee Nature Center grounds that represents the coastal plain of Georgia. And in this area of the world, in this area of the country, we have a whole lot of longleaf pine trees. It's a, a habitat that you could call endangered that definitely needs our attention. But one of the things that we think of so much about it is the animals and the plants that live here. The Florida pine snakes live in the coastal plain of Georgia and in this longleaf pine habitat with the pines, the yucca, and this wire grass that is a good part of the diet of our state reptile, the gopher tortoise. So here's our gopher tortoise. This female was rescued from a busy road in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And she was born or is supposed to live down in the coastal plain of Georgia. So you might wonder how did she get there? So we know that what must have happened was someone found her when she was younger and took her home and kept her as a pet in our area of Georgia. And um, sometimes they don't stay in their enclosures so well. So she may have either broken out or 
was released in this area of the world. Would she survive here in the Piedmont? No, she would not. She's going to be living with us for the rest of her life. She's going to be one of our animal ambassadors. And we'll talk just a little bit more about why gopher tortoises are so adapted for the coastal plain and why they need to be there in order to survive. So taking a little closer look at the gopher tortoise, um, what do you notice about this animal? What is different and kind of special about the way she is built? I'm going to point out a few things for you. Yeah, the back legs look exactly like elephant legs. And what about these front legs here? Like shovels, right? So, one of the things that this animal does is build a burrow in the sandy soil that is part of the longleaf pine forest habitat. And each gopher tortoise builds burrows most of them build two a year. So we're not talking about just digging a hole. We're talking about excavating. So I don't know if you guys can see this picture up really close, but this is inside a gopher tortoise habitat right here. There are some other animals you might notice in here. I'm going to leave that there. We can get a close-up on it. She is made to dig. She can dig a burrow underground, a hole in that sandy soil that can be 10 feet deep and up to 30 and even 40 feet long. So think about that for a second. How many of you have ever dug a hole in your garden? It takes me a long time to dig in the soil to get down enough to plant a plant. But this animal actually has this burrow that she can bask in the sun in the mouth of the burrow. And inside it, at any point in this longleaf community called the gopher tortoise burrow community, she can turn around, move around, and leave the burrow or crawl to the very bottom so imagine all these animals living in this burrow, way underground. Would it be cooler under there? Would it be warmer in winter under there? Yes, it's climate controlled. It's a perfect little habitat in the Longleaf Pine Forest. This animal and each gopher tortoise is responsible for providing that for all of these other animals. They can have up to 350 animals in a gopher tortoise burrow at one time. So this animal is called a keystone species. And her contribution to this habitat is integral to the health of this forest. So all of these animals that live in there depend on the gopher tortoise for a place to live and to hang out, not only when it's too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, but at a very special time that is very natural for a longleaf pine forest. How many of you have ever seen a forest fire? Sometimes pretty scary, right? Well, there are fires that are extremely important and the longleaf pine forest is one of those places where fire is supposed to happen. So you can see the tall trees, you can see the fire just down around the base of the trees and it's going to lick through there pretty quickly and get all the vegetation that's on the floor of the forest. All those wire grasses, those little shrubs, the cactus, so many things that can grow right around the base of the forest. Now we're talking about, these days, a very controlled fire. This would not be a situation where people's houses would burn 
and you would be afraid that you would lose anything else that was important to you. These are times when fire needs to happen to restart the whole growth of the forest. So longleaf pines are kind of crazy because they won't grow unless they get heat. And that's what starts the whole beginning of the forest. The fire comes through, burns down the lower vegetation, and the trees pop up and start to grow. Um, they start out in this little stage that they call the candle stage, which is really funny. They almost look like they have long hair on their heads. And they're really short. And um, when they grow, it's like one big growth spurt at a time. And it takes a long time, like several years before a longleaf pine will get that first real growth spurt. It takes a hundred years for a longleaf pine tree to mature into a really big tree. And so you probably are wondering why we don't have this forest everywhere. Well, it has to be in the coastal plain. In Georgia, that's the bottom half of our state has to have sandy, well-drained soil. And we also have to have some other elements that are gonna be part of this forest. People have to realize how important it is to keep this land and to keep these trees growing here. And unfortunately, whereas we used to have about 90 million acres of longleaf pine forest in Georgia, back before the 1900s and into that century, we only have about 5% of that habitat now. So there are a lot of organizations that are working to improve that area and to replant and to restore the longleaf pine forest. So we're hopeful, but we also know that this threatened species in Georgia is something that we need to be very concerned about and we need to make sure that any of our actions are not going to contribute to the loss of this habitat. So since you don't live in the coastal plain of Georgia necessarily, it doesn't mean that you don't have some choice about this or some ideas and we always welcome everyone who knows a little more about our state reptile to be involved, to do some research, learn some more, and see if there's anything that you might be able to do that would help protect the habitat that they live in.